Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation with absolute value. So we have the absolute value of z plus iz equals 4 plus 2i. Now if you're new to complex numbers and are not familiar with these topics, go ahead and check out my lecture videos I made a playlist and if you have any questions feel free to ask any time. I try to read all comments and try to answer any questions if it wasn't already answered. All right, so let me also know what you think about this video. Now, we have the absolute value of z and iz. What does iz mean? z is a complex number and it can be written as a plus bi. What is so special about a plus bi? You might be asking, right? And I'll tell you, it's the name of this channel. That's what makes it super special, right? So what is the absolute value? Let's talk about that. So absolute value real quick. I know you're going to look at the, you know, uh, lecture videos if you need to. But I just want to talk about plotting a complex number in the plane, which is called the argon plane. Of course, if you connect it to the origin, then you can talk about the absolute value, which is the distance from zero. And of course, it makes an angle, which is theta. And that is called the argument. This is called the modulus, so on and so forth. There's a lot of things to learn about complex numbers, like I said, if you're new to it, but don't worry, you'll get it. So let's go ahead and replace z with a plus b i. Oh, I was going to talk about the absolute value, right? I just got carried away. So if the real part is a and the imaginary part is b, then the absolute value from Pythagorean theorem is just going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of the real part and the measurement. In other words, this is easier to say and write, square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, that's the absolute value. And now we're going to go ahead and plug this into our equation and then solve the problem. Now, the absolute value of a complex number is different from the absolute value of a real number in the sense that a complex number may have a non-zero imaginary part, which comes into play. So it's kind of like a two-dimensional thing. But what if B is zero? Then you get a real number, which is also a complex number, but its absolute value is just going to be normal absolute value, okay? So make sure you know the difference because we can't really do everything we do with absolute values. For example, if you had an absolute value equation with complex numbers like this, I mean, sorry, with real numbers, let's say, this is suppose, I know it's not very common, but suppose these are real number, then you could square both sides and that would get rid of the absolute values, so on and so forth, okay? So with complex numbers, it's a different story. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. Square root of a squared plus b squared plus i times z, right? That's what we have, which is a plus b i equals 4 plus 2 i. Now we could also solve this problem by guess and check, but well, that would probably take forever, don't you think? If you had a multiple choice, yes, I would encourage it, especially if you are not sure how to do it. I, I guess even if you know how to do it, it's still worthwhile because it's going to be much faster. Well, sort of, right? Depends. But I think it's going to be something you need to take advantage of. So let's go ahead and distribute. This is not complete. Plus AI plus I times I, I is I squared. So that gives us a negative one. Oh, one of the things that you should never, ever forget. I squared is always negative one. That's how it's defined. So it's going to be minus B. Okay. And now we kind of need to put the real and imaginary part separately. In other words, put these two together and then identify the real and imaginary parts. This is fairly easy to solve. You know why? Due to the fact that the imaginary part is only a here and for two here. Notice that the imaginary part, which is b in a plus bi or whatever, whatever is multiplied by i, it's only the coefficient of i. Makes sense? It doesn't include i. So when you say, oh, the imaginary part is ai, no, that's incorrect. You gotta be very careful. The real and imaginary parts are both real numbers, okay? So from here, what are we getting? This needs to equal four, this needs to equal two. That gives us a very easy system of equations, right? This equals four and a equals two. Sorry about that, that was my alarm. And now we're gonna go ahead and 
we're gonna go ahead and solve this system. How do we solve this system? Easy, because the second equation gives us the value of a, so kind of like we can plug it in, right? Let's go ahead and plug it in. And we get uh, square root of a squared, which is four plus b squared minus b equals four. How do you solve this equation? This is a radical equation. So one thing to keep in mind is you gotta be very careful. What do I mean by that? So solve radical equations for most of them, we do use squaring both sides. I forgot the name of it. I was gonna say substitution, no. Squaring both sides. Because we want to get rid of the radical, but that may introduce extra or extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are solutions that don't satisfy the original problem, but they just pop up because of squaring. For example, four equals four, but if you write this as negative two squared equals two squared, and just square root both sides and disregard the absolute value. In other words, this doesn't apply negative two equals two. I don't know if that was a good example, but hopefully you get the idea. Here we get b squared plus four, switching sides. And then this one is gonna be b squared plus eight b plus 16. Now this is a very nice equation because we did not even get a quadratic, which means we're only getting a single b value, which probably means that that is gonna be a good solution. Let's subtract four minus 16, that's negative 12. And you can go ahead and divide both sides by eight and simplify the fraction. That will be negative three halves. So B would be that. What is A? A is two, we already know that. A is two, B is negative three halves. So how do you write the solution? Z equals A plus BI, which is two minus three halves of I. Wow. I usually expect to get two solutions for these kinds of equations, but I guess sometimes you only get a single single solution. Now, I have a good question for you. Do you think, is there is there another way to solve this problem? What do you think? Let us know in the comment section, uh, because that's how I could think of it, you know? The only method seems to be available, but you could find the method, make sure to share with us, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and show you the result. If I didn't make any mistakes, this should be accurate. Okay, two minus three halves of i. Hopefully Wolfram Alpha is gonna give us a solution and hopefully I did not forget to include it. Yes, I didn't, ta-da, yay. Of course, it writes it in slightly different form, but if you wanted to write it this way, which I wrote it because it's more standard, that's fine as well. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.